how to use an ovulation predictor kit. As a fertility doctor, I get asked about ovulation testing and tracking all the time. And today I wanna to go over ovulation tests. This is one of the basic things that I find that people do wrong. This channel is all about fertility awareness and education. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and support. I have an entire video on understanding the menstrual cycle. The truth is that you should not be tracking your ovulation if your periods are irregular. It's going to be very hard, frustrating, and potentially expensive if you're using ovulation tests. And so I want you to make the best decisions. If your period is irregular, number one, go see a doctor. Don't be watching the rest of this video. Call your doctor and make an appointment. The end. Okay? Now, presuming that your periods are regular and you're wanting to have a more efficient means of conceiving, we want to know when you ovulate. So how do we use an ovulation predictor kit? First things first, I want you to go to the store. You can buy a box of them or you can buy them off Amazon. I'm showing you a middle of the line option. There are a ton on the store shelves, but what you should get is a box that has a bunch of them because you're not going to need just one. There's also the option of using them that are more strips than this is an actual easier to pee on test. So the other ones you pee in a cup and then you dip in it or these I will show you. So first of all, you have a box. First thing you're going to do is open up your box, take out the instructions. We're done with that. Throw the instructions away. Not joking. They are not helpful. Okay. But then you're going to have a kit. So as I said, there is the cheapo wand dipping ones, which is fine. And there's fancy, really expensive ones, which I'm going to go over also. These tests work the exact same as the cheapo dip one. So really they're both fine. It's just, do you want to have to pee into a cup and dip it inside it? Or do you want to pee on a stick? Personally, it doesn't matter to me. You do. You. Okay. I got to open it up. Okay. So this is what an ovulation predictor kit looks like. Ta-da! That's it, guys. This is what you're getting. So in this particular brand, you are going to pull off the lid and you're going to pee on this little part right here. You're going to pee on this part. That's the pee part. And what is this checking? This is checking for luteinizing hormone or LH. You have LH in your daily life. So what you're really looking for is your LH surge. This is why OPKs can be very confusing and very subjective and hard for women with PCOS. Remember that with PCOS video, you have an elevated basal LH level, so you're more likely to get false positive OPKs and it can be super frustrating. So I don't usually recommend these for women with PCOS. So quick review of what happens with ovulation. You have eggs come out of the vault. Each egg grows inside a follicle. The brain sends out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, which stimulates a follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it starts to make estrogen. Once your estrogen is high, over 200 picograms for 50 hours, so it's a very specific amount, then the brain will say, hey, we must have a mature egg. Let's release a surge of LH. LH surge is released one time. That finalizes meiosis, allows the follicle to rupture. So having a cyst rupture is normal with ovulation, and then the egg is released. That egg then has to be captured by the fallopian tube, and if sperm is present, that's when fertilization can occur. The egg only lives for 24 hours, so determining when you ovulate is really helpful in understanding this process. Sometimes what people are told is to use this at the first morning urine, and that's one of the number one mistakes I see, is when do you start taking them and what time of day? So first of all, LH is released from the brain in the early morning hours. It's a hormone. Hormones live in the blood, so it goes from the brain through the bloodstream to reach the ovaries, but you're checking your urine. And so in order to get something to your urine, it has to go through your kidneys and be filtered out. That process takes time and hours. So I hate when people take these first thing in the morning. I recommend that you take them in the middle of the day. So I usually tell my patients between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's going to give your brain enough time to get the surge to your urine. And what you want to do is you want to start checking before you ovulate. Let's use basic math because you should have regular cycles. Typically, an average luteal phase, luteal is the second half. So after that follicle is released, it makes a corpus luteum that makes progesterone important to support a pregnancy, but that corpus luteum lasts about 14 days. So if your cycles are on average 30 days in length, 
30 minus 14 is 16. Day 16 would be the average day you ovulate. You want to start taking these a little bit before. So I usually recommend a few days ahead of time. So about four days before you expect that you would ovulate. The packet would tell you to take it about 10 days before. One, they want to sell more tests, but also think that will drive you crazy. If in general your periods are 28 days, then you have 28 minus 14, you would ovulate on day 14, start taking it four days before, that's cycle day 10. So start taking the test about four days before you expect to ovulate based on the calendar method. You're going to wake up, live your life, take out your test at lunchtime, pee on the stick. On this one, literally you just pee right on here and then you're going to watch it. There is a control line that is set to a certain amount of LH. What you're looking for in this line-based test is that the line is as dark or darker than the control line. That's going to tell you your LH is high enough to get a positive surge. And let's remember, LH is the trigger from your brain to get you to ovulate. So that doesn't mean you're ovulating that day. It means you're going to ovulate the next day. So you get a positive OPK the day before you ovulate. So if you're trying to time intercourse, you want to have intercourse the day you get the positive and the day after. And then the egg only lives for 24 hours. So sex after that is recreational. Also, another mistake I see is that women take the test way too long. After you've gotten a positive, there is absolutely zero, zero reason to keep taking the tests. Wasting money. Friends, stop. Once you get your positive, great. Put the rest of them back in your friendly little box. Put the box away in case you're not pregnant to use next month. LH will continue to surge on and off in pulsatile fashion throughout the entire luteal phase. Common question is, how do you know if your progesterone is high enough to support a pregnancy? People get all over progesterone. Progesterone is made from that corpus luteum, which is the follicle where the egg grew, because of the LH pulses. So therefore, progesterone pulses also. All right. So you don't need to be checking your progesterone after the fact. If you ovulated, your body will make progesterone. Progesterone can range anywhere from 3 to 40 nanograms the entire time in the luteal phase. All of it means you ovulated. The dip in urine tests are tinier little strips. It actually usually looks like the inside of this if I crack this open. So, okay. Ah, this is what you pee on. And so it was connecting to this. And so here is our little tiny paper and it had an absorbent tab in it, but essentially it has dye on it It has dye on it and then it's going to move across there and you're going to need to get the secondary line if you have your LH surging. So this is a really simple mechanism. So if you're doing the dip test, that this is what you have, friends. So there's no like movement of the dye to pee on. You pee into the little cup and you dip this in and then you wait and you'll see the answer the same. Exactly the same test, testing for LH. There is also a test that is like this that is digital. Now, the digital test has multiple different options and this is super confusing for people. One digital test tests for exactly what this tests for, meaning it is positive. If positive, it usually has like a happy face and then it's a blank circle if negative. So it has an LH cutoff of the test. If you're above it, happy. If you're below it, nothing. That one and this one are my favorites. Some people obsess over the line. So if you're looking at the line for forever, maybe just get the digital test for the two options. So there's a third test. The idea is that this is only giving you one day's notice before you ovulate when you get your positive. And sperm could live for up to five days in your reproductive tract. So maybe you want to know a little bit earlier so you can start having sex earlier. So the point of the other test is to give you a high. So it gives you a nothing, a high, and a peak. The peak is the LH. So this exact mechanism is what's giving you the peak. The high is actually measuring estrogen. Remember how I said your high estrogen level is going to trigger the LH surge? So one metric is measuring estrogen and one is measuring LH. Also very susceptible to get false positives on that test with PCOS because those little tiny follicles in PCOS each make a little bit of estrogen elevating your baseline level. So I'll have patients spend hundreds of dollars on these tests and they just get false positives and it's very frustrating. But to me, that test is just telling you what you already knew. If you're using these tests, you have regular periods. You can do math. So you already did 30 minus 14 equals 16, okay? If you wanna know your most fertile window, five days ending on the day of ovulation, you could subtract from that. You're already starting these tests four days before you think you're going to ovulate, so around day 12. If you have to start having sex around the time when you start taking the tests, you're going to be covering your basics. I also know that there are 
more complex telling you the exact same thing. They look pretty, they have pretty names, and they may have a base and different things you can input into it. And it costs a lot of money to give you the same data. I talk more about ovulation and the other methods of fertility awareness in other videos, so feel free to check them out, specifically basal body temperature and cervical mucus monitoring. If you have questions about ovulation, ask them below, happy to answer. As always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or subscribe onto this channel for more your way. Thanks, friends.